We've now had the Soul EV for eight months and it is time for a review. We've driven 4,000 miles so far, a lot less than we would usually travel because of lockdown. It really is a pleasure to drive, but I suspect that might be the same for most new EVs. Steep hairpin bends are just so easy to navigate. There is a difficult slip road onto the A380 at Sandygate that I have previously avoided. It has a steep and sharp corner onto a very short slip road with poor visibility onto a 70 mile an hour dual carriageway. The Soul EV makes it simple. From 20 miles an hour round the corner and onto the slip road, check the lane is clear and then floor the accelerator to join the carriageway. The costs per journey are extremely low and using the tracker tariff from Octopus Energy has also contributed to the ultra-low costs. More details on that in a moment. We've never worried about running low on electricity, even on our longest journey to Birmingham from Torquay and back again, 175 miles each way. And we've never needed to use a public charger in the whole eight months. At Birmingham, we used a three-pin plug through the kitchen window to charge overnight. All our other travel has been under 300 miles in a day, and we've charged at home. When we did charge to 100%, the car predicted a range of 310 miles the first time, and almost 300 miles the second, based on our rural driving. The Birmingham trip was... Only the second day we charged to 100% before travel. The rest of the time we set the charge limit to 80%. We're using a separate cable. It's more useful than having it fixed to the wall because then you can use it when you're out and about to connect to pod points connectors or other connectors. So we just Put that one, and make sure there's a light that comes on in case it's dark. And we plug it into our wall point. That's it. Lock the car, and late this evening that'll be fully charged. Once it's uh, connected it's now locked in place and you need to set it in the car to be locked when it's finished stay locked because then no one can remove it when it's finished charging we tried to keep it on 70 miles an hour on the motorway for the trip to birmingham and this reduced the range to about 250 miles Having that range means that you don't have to modify your driving style to try and save energy. You just drive to suit the road and conditions, knowing you have a huge reserve for most journeys. You can also use the heater or air conditioning just as much as you want to be comfortable, and they both work well. We've had a few frosty mornings this autumn, and the Uvo app works well to warm and defrost the car ready for your departure. The heads-up display I love. It provides key information about speed and navigation just in the right position. I also think the driver's seat adjustments are excellent and the Kia Soul has a higher driving position and a much greater sense of space inside the car than the Nero or the Kona. The Kia Soul also has better views through the larger windows. An added bonus from the steep rear end is that when the rear door is open, it provides shelter for the person standing there. The Nero and Kona only provide shelter for the boot itself.
journey details. I've recorded the speed and distance data for several journeys so that you can see the type of driving that I do. Some of my journeys have a lot of steep hills up and down, which tests the efficiency of regeneration, which is excellent. And a few steep hairpin bends demonstrate just how good the electric drivetrain is and how easy it is to drive. In traffic, you can creep at any speed you want, just with the accelerator pedal, even holding it on a steep hill. You can also reverse at any speed, and the rear camera provides an excellent view. This fine speed control in both forward and reverse, with a tight turning circle, makes parking easy in tight spaces. I've set, I have the car set to maximum regeneration for one pedal driving. It is still more than sporty enough. We have had four adults and a child seat in the car and the boot has proved to be plenty big enough for all our requirements. I think the important figure for energy consumption is what I pay for at the meter and how far that it will take me. I don't see the point of separating out energy losses in charging the battery. My pod point installation tells me exactly how much electricity I've used from the meter to charge the car since it was installed. Since I also charge after each journey, it tells me what I've used for each journey. The in-car display shows the energy used from the battery for each journey. Keep a record at intervals as the amount of data stored is limited. My bills from Octopus Energy tell me how many kilowatt hours I've consumed and how much I paid on the Octopus Tracker tariff. There are a few points where I think Kia could do better. Lane keeping assist is a menace on narrow roads with occasional white lines. I thought there was a steering fault until I realised what it was. You have to remember to turn it off at the start of every journey, but it does work well on A roads and motorways. Road noise from the tyres depends very much on the type of road surface. Some roads are noisy at speed, but most are very quiet, and for rural driving at low speeds it is beautifully quiet. The built-in navigation system is not good at all. It is difficult to select a destination, especially in a rural area. It will take you off the main road onto a narrow cut through even though the short road takes longer. Maps and speed limits are not up to date. Android Auto works well, but cannot use the heads-up display, which is a shame. Bodywork is good, except that the top of the bonnet holds water and collects dirt. However, the front profile could easily be better streamlined. There are too many ridges and indents. There is room for a cable box under the bonnet, but none is fitted. I ordered mud flaps with the car, but the garage said the ones Kia Supply didn't fit, and so refunded that. An independent ventilation system for the rear seats would be very useful, but ventilation for the front is excellent. The front passenger seat has limited adjustment and no height adjustment. The brake discs front and rear are already showing a little pitting. I think that all EVs should consider using stainless steel brake discs so that this doesn't become a problem. However, the problems are minor. I wouldn't go back to a fossil fuel car, and I still think that the Kia Soul EV is the best value electric car on the market today.
Kier has been running a referral scheme that at the moment offers the new Kier purchaser for any Kier car a free Amazon Fire tablet and an Amazon Echo 5 device. The Fire tablet is a good tablet once you turn off Amazon's advertising and the Echo 5 device makes a good bedside clock, again once you turn off everything else. Use my Kia referral code immediately after you have bought your Kia car. Sign up for my Kia and enter my code on the Refer a Friend page of my Kia. Octopus Energy is an excellent supplier of green energy. If you can avoid using energy to charge your car between 3pm and 7pm, and avoid any other high energy use during those times, such as washing clothes or immersion heaters, then Octopus Agile is the tariff to go for. Try and get the latest smart meter before you switch if you can, as Octopus is behind with meter installations at the moment. However, my appointment to have a new smart meter installed was cancelled in the first week of lockdown and I am still waiting. I have been using the Octopus Tracker Tariff for the past eight months and it has given me lower electricity prices and a lot lower gas prices than I could get anywhere else, so I'm happy. Tracker isn't listed on their website, but they will supply it if you ask and there is a link from my website. If you do decide to switch to Octopus Energy, Please use my link when you make your switch, not afterwards. It will give you £50 off your first Octopus Energy bill. You can also see the prices for Octopus Energy for the past year and more on my website.